What if I told you you could go from an idea to a working app in less than 30 seconds? That's possible now using Claude Artifacts, and you can create anything from a calculator, a translation tool, a game, even something for personal use. Maybe you're helping your kids study something at home and you want a personalized experience to do that. That's now possible. And I'm going to show you exactly how you can use artifacts and how easy it really is. Let's jump in. So this is Claude as we know it. When you come to Claude, you see the normal chat interface um, and you might just ask it a question or talk to it. But if you open up this side tab over here now, you'll see this section called Artifacts. And if you click on that, you will now see a library of artifacts. So artifacts are basically applications and small sort of apps and tools that people have built that you can also publish yourself, but there are examples of things that other people have, have done that you can just have a look at to get some inspiration of what's possible here. And I think this is really, really cool. So one of my favorite ones actually is this one that um, allows you to basically create a uh, interactive drum machine. So if you click on this, and you can play around with it. You can just say, you know, I'm looking for something kind of techno and you can play it. So fun. And you can click around. So cool. And then you can like switch it up. Um, amazing. Now to think that this was not possible before, you know, you'd have to go into tools like cursor over here and, you know, write applications and code. And that was kind of like one way of building applications, which is still brilliant. But the fact that you can do this inside Claude just makes it so much more fun. So there are loads here that you can play with. Um, let's see what else there is. They've got a, a game here, Slime Soccer. Um, so let's see, we're going to do single player, one minute. And I think I just, yeah, I could just use my, <laughs> just use my uh, tabs to do this. Oh, okay. Defend that. There you go. Cool. Like fun little game. So these are like interesting sort of like applications that I actually see interesting uses for definitely for my kids, man. This is a really fun way to actually get them introduced into, into AI. So I'll probably be using this with them. But the really cool thing here is you can take any sort of application that already exists. You can just hit customize over here and it will open up in the Claude console with the prompt, um, uh, as well. So to tell you that what you can do to it, what you can change and the type of things that you can uh, do to kind of make this your own. So if I wanted to play around with this, I could actually speak to this and ask it to update something. So I can say, um, um, turn the characters into uh, numbers um, and make the colors more futuristic. Um, no, make, make the theme Make the theme um, space-like and let's see what it does. And so it should be able to just take that example of what's already been created and customize it a little bit. And I think this is an interesting way just to get familiar with the idea of building things with AI, you know? So if you are at a stage where you haven't even played around with the AI or you're seeing people build applications and you have an idea, and often when we have an idea, we we get to brainstorming and writing things down. But I've always found that being a designer and a, a, and a builder myself, creating things is the best way of seeing them, seeing if they work or not. And you can share them with people and, and actually get real feedback. So that I think is really, really important. So the fact that you can do this right now and, you know, it's no code. You don't have to worry about how it's going to actually uh, be written because Claude will do it for you. And you'll just sit back, let it run. And once it's done, uh, you can actually start playing with it and iterate it as you go. So let's see what it comes back with from this um, little adjustment we made to this game. Um, and that will be pretty fun to see. So there are loads of artifacts that you can play with. And actually, one of the cool things that you can do inside Claude, if you just go to um, back here, there are loads of applications. And of course, you know, you can like, you know, just browse through these. But over here, it says, um, if you want to build one, all you have to do is start by saying, let's build an app. So we can open that a new chat now, and we're going to use that sentence to create an application ourselves. So while that's running, we'll let that do its thing. If I go here now and I say, um, let's make an app um, that, um, let's see, that takes, uh, that uh, helps me pack a suitcase for my travels. I want to be able to tell it my um, baggage allowance. 
where I'm traveling to and the duration of my trip. Um, I'm happy for it to perhaps have a questionnaire to understand my trip or, or style slash preferences in more detail. Um, and it must use live weather data to, um, live data for the period I'm traveling to give me the best advice. Okay. Um, let's see. Shall we start there? Yeah. Okay. Let's start there. Um, I think I've got a fun idea later on that I might want to introduce into this. So let's see how this first uh, version of this looks. So this is an example of just an idea that you can just start with straight away. And it's going to start creating the artifact now. So you can see it's now starting to rewrite this code. Um, and the beautiful thing, by the way, about Claude Artifact is, with a new release is that it can actually use Claude's API. And so for those of you who don't know what an API is, normally if you were to actually work with uh, Claude, so you could say uh, Claude anthropic api docs so normally if you're a developer you would look at something called an api reference to understand how to actually write code uh, to get things done with a large language model like claude or open ai's chat gpt and so these are you know um, kind of code references and best use um kind of practices that these um companies will give you to actually help you write the code. But you don't have to worry about any of this because Claude's API is built into artifacts. And so you can actually get it to do things like translate live text or ask a question or whatever it is inside of your application. So it doesn't have to just be like a plain application. You might have an idea now to, to create something like a calorie tracker or, you know, use live data to do, you know, whatever else you want it to or create a visualization or a graph or a chart. And that's all possible because it can actually use the API of Claude to create these interesting applications for you, which I think is really, really fun. So. Okay, let's come back to our app here. It says, um, oh, it hit the max length for a message. Okay, cool. So let's see, continue. Let's see what it does here. Um, okay, let's see if it carries on. So this is uh, the soccer game, by the way, that we were just editing to be more space-like. We wanted the number, we wanted the characters turn into numbers. So let's see what it does. We'll let that run for a minute. Meanwhile, over here, our smart travel packing assistant is coding away. Um, and we'll let it do its thing and see what it looks like. And I think this will be pretty interesting because it will actually require using parts of the API to actually, you know, perhaps, you know, create the questionnaire for us um, and actually, you know, uh, adapt based on the answers I'm giving it. And that's where the AI portion of it becomes so interesting, because if you didn't have the AI portion of it, like AI coding, for example, is one element, just the AI being able to write code. But to actually be able to do things in the application of the AI is a completely new experience here because you could have a static application, of course, like something with just, you know, hard data that doesn't really change. But the fact that you can actually adapt the application based on the user's input using AI makes it a lot more interesting. So let's see what it's saying here. Um, okay, this is pretty cool. See, it designs it really beautifully. Beautifully, it's, It kind of has these uh, four steps up here. Um, destination, well, I'll use my actual travel plans because I am going to London. And I'm going to London on the 7th of, um, uh, 7th of July, 2025. Oops. Let me just delete that. 2025. Oh, we've got a nice calendar tool there as well. I'm coming back on, um, August the 7th. Okay. So those are my dates. Baggage allowance is 25 kilos. So for example, like if I wanted to now have a functionality in this application as I'm working on it that, Hey, I want to be able to change a metrics to pounds or, you know, I want to make the date picker a bit more beautiful and I want to change a the color theme. These are things that you can just talk to Claude about and reply in natural language and it will adapt those for you and it will modify the application. And I think that's really, really important because again, coming back to my point earlier on, when we're sometimes building applications, you know, we go too far into planning and thinking out, but actually by seeing it come to life, gives us a much better understanding of what's possible and also kind of gives us ideas as we are creating as well. So there we go. So baggage type, carry on or check baggage. That's quite cool. So I'm going to check baggage um, and let's go next. Okay. So trip and purpose. So ledger vacation out of it. Yeah. It's kind of a family visit. 
and leisure vac- vacation. Let's do leisure vacation. Uh, what's your packing style? So my packing style, I'd say, is hmm. Yeah, I kind of like practical, I suppose. A bit fashion forward sometimes, but practical is nice. Accommodation type, I'm going to be staying with family and friends. Okay, and next. Uh, what do you plan to do? So, okay, this is nice. Nice little check boxes created here. So I'm going to do some um, sports and fitness. I'll be doing definitely not swimming or beach in London. We get enough of that in Dubai. Um, shopping, not necessarily. Maybe some outdoor things with the kids. Uh, I do have one or two formal events as well. Uh, not necessarily nightlife, but maybe some fine dining if I decide to go out with my wife or something or some friends. Weather preference, prefer staying warm. Let's adapt to weather. So there we go. So now see, it's, it went and fetched the live weather data. And so that's very, very interesting. It actually go out and understand that during that period of time in London, it's going to be between 50 to 30 degrees Celsius. It's going to be a little bit cloudy. There might be 69% chance of rain, which is really cool. It's actually going to got that data for us in real time. Um, and um, we can go in here and here's where it tells me my, my packing list now. So it says that you want to do 19 long sleeve shirts, okay, um, 13 jeans or trousers, uh, one light jacket or cardigan, and I can just kind of check them off, which is nice. So it actually turns it into sort of a to-do list as well. Um, and then it gives me different uh, elements, so toiletries, medications, electronics, and it kind of gives me the rough estimate of the weight as well. So I think this is really cool. So, okay, so it's saying to me weight limit exceeded. So maybe if I'm adding too much, let's see. Um, how much have I added? Um, so if I added nothing, it says wait. Okay, consider rooming. Okay, so at the moment, this is a part that probably isn't working so well because it's saying weight limit exceeded, but I haven't actually um, added anything here yet. But let's just see. If I do add a couple of things, what does it do? Nothing because it's showing an error. Okay, so at this point, this is great because I can now talk to... Claude, and I can say that um, when I get to the packing list, and what you can do here is actually, actually give it a screenshot. I can give it a screenshot here, and I, of, um, I'm going to give it a screenshot of this entire section. I'm going to say to it, um, when I get to the packing list, um, it tells me the weight limit is exceeded, even though I haven't actually checked any items in the checklist. It also shows the complete packing button as green, which indicates that I'm good to move forward. Yet it doesn't allow me to probably because there's an error of weight exceeded. Um, This button should be grayed out if there is an error and only green if we're good to move forward. Okay, so that's a little bit of feedback and you can just send it. So using screenshots inside as well is pretty interesting. And so this gives you a little snippet, by the way, in terms of how I might build applications on a bit more of a larger scale. So I sometimes build applications that require a bit more complexity um, and they're you know, a little bit more um, interactive, maybe some more pages, but I do those using cursor. I use them, uh, build them using Webflow. So it's a little bit more advanced, but this is a, a, a interesting uh, insight into even how I work on a larger scale where I'll just take screenshots. I'll put it into my AI model and I'll ask it to make certain adjustments for me and changes. And so it's just a good practice as well of how to be able to work with these types of models. So we're going to let it go now. And what's interesting here is it will only edit the parts of the code that are required for the changes that I've requested. So if there's not a specific um, part of the code that needs to be written, it will just leave it as is. And so that makes it a lot faster when we're iterating to get the product back. So you can see here, it's come back very quickly. Um, and it's telling us the changes that it's made over here. So I can say now again, I'm going to London, um, 7th of July, 2025. Oh, I keep messing the date up. Um, 7th of August, 2025. And I have 25 kilos. Um, next, let's just do this again. Cool. Um, nice. Um, and let's just add a couple of these, whatever. It doesn't matter at this point. Let's see. So again, getting the data, cool. Um, and it's got um, our package. So now it's fixed that. So it tells us that we've done zero of the five, even though it should probably say 27, uh, 25 kilos there. But let's see what it does. So as I add, okay, so it tells me I've exceeded five kilos because actually it should be 25 kilos. So it's still not working as we want. So we can go and give it more feedback, but at least we know it's taking our changes and making those adjustments. And it says to us that as we start checking, we can go to complete packing rather than actually being stuck with that error. So 
if I go here and do something of 0.5 kilos, it's actually within the range of five kilos, which should be 25. But again, we can make that adjustment. But let's just test this out. If I hit complete packing, okay, nothing happens right now. But maybe when you tell it to do something or give a congratulations screen or something. But again, we could iterate that. So that just gives you a little bit of an idea of the type of things that you can do with Claude Artifacts. And you can publish this um, and then you can share it with people and you can get feedback on it. Uh, which I think is really fun. And so there's lots of interesting ways that you can play with this. And this, this is just a basic idea and a basic application that you can build. But I just wanted to show you this so you guys can get an idea of how to actually build something with Claude Artifacts. So, okay, so we seem to have our issue here still uh, with this artifact. Let's see if it could fix it. Um, and uh, if it doesn't, no problem. It might just be something that uh, requires a bit more work and a bit more iteration. But it seems to have done something because it's telling us that it's made some changes for us. Um, but let's see if we can get it to actually work, which will be pretty cool. So yeah, it's really, really interesting what's possible here. Um, you know, especially being able to just take small ideas and bring them to life and even to be able to talk to their AI about your ideas and maybe get, excuse me, maybe get its suggestions on the type of things that you should be, you know, introducing. So, okay, let's see what happens now. So it should work now without any errors. Let's see. I don't actually see anything. <clears throat> So am I impressed with this part? Not necessarily because I can't actually do anything. Okay, so I think this might, might need a little bit more work for this specific game. It seems to have, have a couple of errors. Um, you might need to go through this flow, but again, this is a little bit, you know, where we're just remixing an existing artifact rather than actually uh, creating one from scratch. So maybe a few iterations of just going through these errors and doing this, you can kind of figure out what's going on. But I'm sure that maybe a game is a little bit more complex, so it might get stuck a little bit. Um, but what a, what a Debbie Downer to end the video on, um, if it doesn't work. But I just wanted to give you an idea of how it works more than anything, so you guys can start playing around with it yourself. So let's give it one more shot. Let's see what happens. But yeah, like I said, you can go in here and start playing with loads of different types of uh, applications. Um, you know, so we can go back to artifacts over here. And um, again, you know, click on these different ones. We can play with them. Let's wait for this to keep going. Um, what other ones have people built, which are really cool? Okay, language learning tutor. Cool. So this is really in depth, actually. This is really interesting. Look at this. <clears throat> Look how cool this is. Like it actually has these such beautiful user interface and, you know, very clean, just very clean elements here that I think can help, help you make your, 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 um, your app beautiful. So, okay, these are different. Red pass, start a conversation. Okay. Hello. See, this is where the AI model starts working and can actually now talk back to you, which is a new feature in Artifact. So I think like you can kind of create these own chat experiences and it speaks back to me in English. And so there it gives some feedback. It says, great job. Try this. Okay. Interesting. So this is another example of a really cool, um, uh, application that you can build using Artifact. So I would definitely suggest clicking around and playing with these. Um, I really hope this thing comes together because we really want to see this. If it doesn't work this time around, ah, it's not working. It's not working. Okay. So there seems to be some error with this, but let's leave that part where it is because I don't want the video to drag on too much. I think the, the brilliant thing here is that our actual application that we built, um, worked quite well. So, so here we can see the application, which I think is great. So yeah, loads of fun things that you can do with this. Um, this is a small little demo, an example of what's possible with Claude Artifacts because it just came out. So I wanted you guys just get a feel for how it works, but definitely jump in there, start playing around, create different applications, go crazy with it. And I think it will really inspire you to bring those ideas to life that normally just kind of sit there and you don't end up doing anything with. So get in there, play with Claude Artifacts. Let me know in the comments how you're feeling about this and, and if you're using it. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It really means the world to me. And I will catch you again in the next demo. Teaching the world what they need to know. This is your show. The prompt show.